Okay, good morning and welcome back to Tipler TV and thank you for joining the Average Golfer at Four Golf Chester. It is still cold here in the UK, but there's a bit of sunshine there and uh, I can't moan, it's Monday morning, I am hitting golf balls. Anyway, what's today's video all about? Lots of comments over the past year, I would say, about how irons have changed their lofts in, in strengthening lofts, perhaps even described in some cases as cheating the system a little bit so you've got strong lofted irons so for example what we're going to do today is this the strongest lofted seven iron on the market was released in recent weeks i didn't cover it in a video it was the rogue x from callaway believe it or not this seven iron is lofted at 27 degrees that's pretty damn strong if you take, for example, my Mizuno MP5 irons, which I played with for a few years, seven iron was lofted, I think, at 34 degrees. So there's a huge difference. So arguably, yeah, you can understand there's gonna be yardage gains, but also what kind of losses are you gonna make in terms of, well, there's lots of questions that come about, and we'll answer them at the end. Let's get into straight what, what I'm gonna put up against it. I've been waiting for a while to get an identical match, and I've dug out my MP5, but it's my five iron. My five iron is lofted at, you guessed it, 27 degrees. So this is an absolutely perfect head-to-head -head example of what the difference is between the two. Are the numbers gonna be exactly the same? Arguably, a lot of people would suggest 27 degrees, 27 degrees, one says five, one says seven, but the results out there into the range on dry ball data are gonna be identical. I'm not convinced that will be the case, but we're gonna find out very soon. I have got identical shaft in these. So I always add my clubs were shafted with a uh, C-Taper uh, 120 stiff shaft, and I've put the exact same shaft into the Rogue X. So this is the first time for me that I've done a test where the conditions are absolutely identical. We're gonna use premium tailor-made TP5 balls, I will hit, I don't know, let's see if I can get 10 balls of each again, so we've got a bit of a broader spectrum uh, of shots to analyse, and let's go and find out what the differences are, because I'm as interested in this one as hopefully you are. So, move camera, hit golf balls, and then have a look at what this comes out with. This should be interesting. Now then, before I start to hit some golf balls, I think I should just clarify, these two clubs are totally different in terms of person they're aimed at, the whole profile is hugely different. This is by no means a head-to-head. -head. We would no way pitch an MP5 up against a Rogue X. This is all about modern, strongly lofted clubs versus traditionally lofted clubs. That's the thing here. So don't get mixed up. I mean, if I was gonna look at uh, the, the actual size of these two clubs is unbelievably different. The top line on the Rogue X is about, I don't know, about a centimeter wide and it's literally half that on the MP5. So totally different club, like I said, but I've got a feeling some people might just mention in the comments that this was unfair in terms of a head-to-head. -head. That's not what this is. This is about loft v loft, traditional versus modern. That's it. Now I'll hit some golf balls. Okay, so that's golf balls hit at full golf this morning and uh, decided to take a little bit of time. There was a, a fair few shots, I think for some odd reason. I've got a feeling I ended up with nine uh, shots with each uh, club. Um, but I think, like I said, I wanted to take just a broader picture of, uh, of how I performed with both irons. But like I said, it takes a little bit of reading. Um, I'm gonna throw both sets of numbers and then perhaps uh, you might want to hit the pause button and have a little bit of an analyze on those yourself. And then we'll have a look in the overall comparisons uh, when we look at the averages. Um, I think before I start into the numbers, I think as well, I'm going to view it from how I perceive the numbers. But I think they can be read in a number of different ways. And I think from a number of different perspectives. And that's what's important to me with this video. 
I don't think there's a right or wrong way to view these figures. I think it very much depends perhaps where you sit in the game, what your handicap is, and what you're looking for from golf clubs in general. Don't forget, this is very much traditional loft versus new loft. It's not a head-to-head -head in the club types. Anyway, traditional MP5. Like I said, here's the numbers. Club I've played for quite some time, 27 degrees worth of loft. Um, you see with all shots, I think straight away, you, you see with this type of iron as well, and this type of iron, I'm not gonna to refer to the MP5, but this type of iron, a lot of consistency. Obviously it was nice in terms of feel, but in terms of carry distance and spin, all where I'd expect them to be. With a five iron, for me to spin in at 4.1 on average, or 4.183, nearly 4.2, that's a good enough number for me in terms of spin. I say I don't spin the ball highly, a low spinning is what I always produce. 170 carry, um, 15.7 in terms of launch angle, and peak height, 78 feet. And that's all where I would expect that club to be. Hit the ball nice, great feel, like I said, forge clubs, and uh, more than happy with the way I perform with that. Now we go into this Callaway X um, Rogue X iron, uh, 27 degrees, and this is a seven iron. And again, I don't really get hung up that much with all this strongly lofted stuff. It's just, uh, you know, the number on the bottom of the club is irrelevant to me. It's literally what suits your game and how you're able to best perform with it in your hands and what you need from a golf club. There is, in my opinion, no right or wrong. I don't feel as though there's any cheating going on with this. And I think in these numbers, let's have a look. So ball speed 118, interesting. Faster ball speeds off the seven iron. Spinning 4698. So arguably for a seven iron, you'd think that the spin number is low but this is a 27 degree seven iron so if you put them head to head versus the five iron it's actually spinning higher than what the five iron was doing okay so that's the first point 170 carry as opposed to 171 no differences there virtually identical i think again they're fairly consistent in terms of its performance the interesting differences for me are at the other end really, 16.8 in terms of launch angle and peak height at 87. And then there are some considerable differences, 10 uh, feet higher in peak height and one degree difference in launch angle. And I think yet again, when you go to these type of strong lofted game improvement irons, whatever you want to call them or class them as, they talk about them being low spinning, well low spinning yes, but coming down from a much higher peak height uh, steeper descent angle which again add that into the spin rate and I still think the ball is stopping perfectly fine and you know my opinions on that um, I'll throw before because it's the final figure really I'll throw up a little dispersion of the shots again everything took down the left hand side which I tend to do but it was all fairly tightly grouped not a lot going on there I wouldn't say one club performed any better than the other the one thing I will say the offset in the likes of the uh, Rogue X did not help me one bit and uh, yeah, I'll, it, like I said, it wouldn't, be a, it wouldn't be a club I would choose to gain. And interestingly enough for me, and I'm going to throw up the averages now so we can do a direct comparison on averages, the interesting thing for me, I was quite surprised in some ways at the Rogue X um, 27 degrees loft 7 iron didn't go further than it did. It was quite strange and I've not done the review on the Rogue irons at all. Um, I hit a few and I'm not, I'm not overly impressed by this range of golf clubs and interestingly I think that taking something like the Ping G700 um, into this equation I think the yardage difference might have been considerably different in terms of carry in favour of the stronger lofted 7 iron oddly enough so performance wise this wasn't one of those uh, strongly lofted but certainly not bashing it out there uh, I've hit longer seven irons with weaker lofts, so that was a bit of a strange one. The idea with the Callaway X was that for the first time I had an identical loft v loft situation, 27 degrees versus 27 degrees. But I think you've still got to consider there are perhaps for me better performing game improver irons or stronger lofted irons out there that would have made this test a little bit different again. But like I said, we are where we are. So comparisons interesting to me ball speed again and this is about you know 
the faster face on these bulkier clubs bit more assistance across the face because as you know with the mp5 i will probably be finding a few places other than the center of the golf club so that ball speed just drops off a little bit spin number like i said higher spinning on the seven iron uh, than on the five iron and some of you might say well that number is just too low but again for me i look at all things considered peak height launch angle descent angle coupled in with the spin I've got no issue with that. In fact, like I said, it's suggesting if you looked at carry and total yardage, then the seven iron is coming to a stop at a sooner rate. And there's the differences in the launch angle, 16.8 versus 15.7. Like I keep saying, there's no right or wrong, but I just don't think we should be dismissive of strong lofted irons. I don't think, I think for, there's a lot of golfers that taking a game improvement iron, stronger lofted, can help them enjoy the game more. I'm not saying it will make you a better player. No golf clubs make you a better player. It's lessons, technique, whatever you want to call it, make you a better player. I'm here to analyze clubs and like I said, in, for some people, those strong lofted clubs will help them enjoy the game more and they will perform better for them than obviously the likes of MP5s would. And I know it's very much an obvious statement, but it's where this thing comes in about, there's such a bashing that strong lofted clubs get. And I just think it's perhaps a little bit uncalled for. It, 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 it's not, it's horses for courses, as I would say. They ain't a club I would gain, but I don't have an issue with them. By the same time, I don't have an issue that they're lofted at 27 degrees because I think, like I said, they can certainly help people and then flip it all around and you come to the MP5 and that MP5 again is also suited to a group of players, far better suited to a group of players where they've got the forge feeling, they've got maybe the more consistent numbers. Um, they want to be able to control the ball flight, they want to hit different shape shots, but that's not the average golfer. The average golfer needs that little bit of assistance and maybe strong lofted clubs. I definitely think, I said it in a video and I wish I could find it, um, over nine, 10 months ago where 30 degree, 29, 30 degree seven irons will become the norm. And I said that a year ago, and again this year going forward, I think the more clubs that you see released coming from the big manufacturers, a seven iron will be in and around 29, 30 degrees. Um, without any shadow of a doubt, it's something that we will have to get used to. And hopefully the player's irons, as they call them, keep on at traditional lofts and that way you've got the best of both worlds. The players irons that want traditional lofts go to the likes of that club and somebody who needs a little bit of assistance, maybe some slower swing speeds and they needs a bit of help with launch angle and all those other things um, and a bit more distance out of a, a seven iron than they would normally get, then the option is there for them. But it's a real, like I said, read the figures, have a look at them, see what you think of them. I'm really interested to know the general sense of opinion because as I say, that is purely, that is mine and mine alone. Um, so as ever, it's a good one for debate. So uh, comments down below. One thing I should say, by the way, um, I did note that another channel, uh, Michael Newton Golf, had posted this video literally yesterday. And I couldn't believe it when I first got back. So I filmed this this morning, came back, caught the fact that he'd done the exact same video. But I think the interesting thing for me is, because I almost didn't post it, I thought the video has been done. Um, but... What I will say, Michael Newton is a, is a pro. He hits the ball far better than I do. Maybe there's two different perspectives there and you can perhaps catch that video as well and, uh, and see what you think of that one. And the numbers that were produced, uh, I'll have to have a look and see how much similarity there is to mine. It'd be far better ball striking, no doubt. Anyway, um, as ever, thanks for watching. Comments down below, thumbs up if you like the video. All them things help massively in the promotion of this channel. And a quick thank you because we're flying along at the moment. We're, uh, we're trying to get to 8,000 subscribers, which is absolutely unbelievable. So as ever, uh, your support is greatly appreciated and uh, I'll see you very, very soon.